Hello guys, today I will explain the concurrent programming patterns with Java. I will show how to use the Threads class. I will also show some solutions for concurrent access with the synchronized keyword, atomic object and the semaphores. And finally, I will show the futures and the completable futures. This will be a very intense video, so pay attention, subscribe to my channel and let's go. This video belongs to a playlist of Java for Big News. You can follow the video with the same project. There is a link in the video's description to download it. The concurrent programming is when some resources are being used by parallel tasks. It's like if a task is adding items to a list and at the same time another task is reading items from the same list. I must take care of the resource being used as I may read incomplete items. The threads are the main object when talking about concurrent programming. A thread is a parallel task. I will create some actions inside a thread and see its behavior in the principal thread. This thread will wait 2 seconds, print something and wait again 1 second. Meanwhile, the main thread will print starting the thread, start the previous thread, print that I've started the thread, call the join method and print finish. I've passed all the content in the constructor as a lambda. I may have used an external class, but for small implementations the lambda is a better choice. Let's see all of this. I can see that my secondary thread is printing the information when I call the join method. The start method will initiate the thread in the background, but my main thread won't wait for it. And the join method makes my main thread wait until the secondary thread finishes. And what if I remove the join call? All the content of my secondary thread is printed at the end of my main thread. My main application can't finish as there is something else running in the background. There is an implicit join at the end of my application. So the start method starts my secondary thread but don't wait for it. And the join method waits until the secondary thread finishes its execution. The thread class is the implementation, and the runnable class is the interface. The interface runnable has nothing behind it. I must tell what is the behavior. Nevertheless, the runnable class only has the run method. The run method is a blocking method. I run the content and wait until it finishes. But I can use the runnable instance inside a thread. And now I have the start and join methods as before. Let's go to the next level. I will create 1000 threads that increment a value.
the executor service will limit the number of threads that can run in parallel, and it will handle the start of each thread. With the shutdown, I indicate that no new threads are acceptable. And with the await termination, I set a timeout to allow all the threads to finish, otherwise an exception will be thrown. So 1000 threads, increment each one the counter by one. The expected result is 1000, no? The result isn't 1000. As all of those threads are accessing the same variable, some may access it at the same time. If two threads read the value 100 at the same time, both will increment it by 1 to 101 and store it. The solution for this problem should be that when I increment the counter, no other thread can read the value. The other threads must wait until my increment is finished. There are multiple ways to solve this problem. With the semaphore, I explicitly say when the other threads are blocked and when they can access again the counter. Now I have the counter to 1000, as expected. In the constructor, I indicate how many threads can access the counter at the same time, only one. With the acquire method, I block the other threads. The thread will acquire a past container. The other threads will be blocked in the acquire method until someone releases the pass. With the semaphore, I indicate where will stop the threads and where to release the pass. But I have to be careful. What if I have multiple semaphores? I have the first one to access some set of resources and the second one to access the main resource. But somewhere else in my application, I also use those semaphores, but I use them in another way. The second semaphore is also used for some setup and the first one for another resource. What happens at deadlock? Two threads will get blocked forever, one waiting for the other to finish. This is a real problem with concurrent programming. The solution, just be careful with the shared resources. The semaphore is a class of Java, but the synchronized is a keyword. With the synchronized keyword, the acquire and release methods are transparent for me. I just indicate which method is the resource that will be shared between multiple threads and Java will handle the acquire and release of the concurrent threads. One thousand, good. With synchronized, I can't customize how many threads may access my resource. Only one thread can access at the same time. With the semaphores, I can configure it, but the usage of synchronized is a lot easier, as I will never forget to call the release method. I don't want to indicate at each method where I modify my counter the synchronized keyword. I may forget it. For that, I use a counter which has already the synchronized in its definition. This object already has the synchronized or the semaphores in its implementation. I don't need to indicate it. With the atomic object, all the methods which will modify the values will be protected against concurrent access. Last object, the future and the completable future. What if I want that my thread returns me some result? Here I specify a supplier, which will return a value, but in a secondary thread. With the supply async method, I start the secondary thread, and with the get method, I read the available value. 
If the thread didn't finish, I will get blocked here until it finishes. But if I don't want to get blocked and I want a default value, I have the complete method. With the complete method, I read, I get the result if it's available. Otherwise, I read the default value. I can also use completable futures with runnable lambdas instead of suppliers. This has no difference from using the threads I showed at the beginning. Last point of the video, but very important. What if I want to perform another action in a separated thread again when my secondary thread finishes? I want a third thread to start when my second finishes. The first supplier will be executed in a separated thread. When it finishes, another thread will be created to run the following function. This function gets as input value the output of the supplier and returns its own value. Finally, I call the get method to obtain the result of the completed chain. This is the combination of two lambdas run in separated threads. As in all of my videos of this playlist for beginners, I've written some assignments that you can test on your own to practice with concurrent programming. Read the assignments, write what's asked and run the test as follows to validate what you have written. That's all for this video. Before quitting, click on the thumbs up and see you in another video. Bye!